All right. So um, before we begin, and let me just get the PowerPoint up. All right. So before we begin, I figured we would just go over um, some basics about the test and I can an, uh, answer uh, any questions you might have about the test. So we'll take a couple minutes to do that. Um, first, some basics about the test. Um, it will be on Wednesday and you will have um, any time on Wednesday to take it. So the test will open at 12.01 a.m. And I guess I don't need to be sharing this. You can, you can look at my face while I'm doing this. Um, the test will open at 12.01 a.m. and it will close at 11.59 p.m. Okay, so you have any time on Wednesday when you wanna start the test. Uh, when you start the test though, a timer will, will go, right? So as soon as you log in, uh, start the test, a timer will start and you have an hour. So if you lose connection, um, that timer's still going. So make sure you're, you have a, a stable connection um, and you're in a place that's quiet. Uh, speaking of that, um, hopefully you saw my announcement. We will be using Proctor U to do this. So what is Proctor U? If you haven't checked out the link yet, and I strongly suggest that you check out your system uh, requirements. Um, so what Proctor U is is that it's going to have you're going to be recorded on um, your webcam. Um, what will be recorded is you um, taking the test and it will also be your screen uh, recorded simultaneously. Um, so we will be able to see what's, what you're doing and what's on your screen. Um, some things about ProctorU that I've noticed is that um, um, right now we're using an AI to watch you and then a real person will look at that AI uh, and check to see what the AI would flag. The most common thing that's flagged is when people have the like webcam like really close to their face and then they do like something like this when looking at their um, paper, their scratch paper. So what I would suggest is just make sure the webcam is far enough away so when you're looking down, your face isn't covered like this, right? So that, that seems uh, the number one flag to happen. Um, you, so you will need a webcam, you will need not a tablet, not a phone. You cannot take this test on a tablet. The system doesn't work like that. You cannot take this test on a phone. A uh, system doesn't work like that. If you do not own a webcam or like a laptop, I believe the university library can rent those out to you. Um, so you should be able to get one hopefully by Wednesday. Uh, when taking the test, no one else can be in the room with you. Um, so make sure you are in a private room. Um, you will have scratch paper available. I'll make that available to you. Uh, the equation sheet should be online. Um, you can, of course, use a calculator. Um, what else? Yeah, there's an hour to do it. Um, not all multiple choice. Laptop camera should be fine. Um, yeah, so, so I'm using a laptop camera right now, um, as long as that works. Um, how many questions are there on the test? So that's always a funny question to me. So um, I was talking to my wife earlier and I was trying to think of like, what questions would I be asked? And the number one question I always get asked is how many questions are on the test? But I'm not sure how that changes how you study because what if I said there's 200 questions? What if I said there's one question, right? Um, anyways, regardless, that's just my fun little observation. I don't know, 23, something like that. Not all math questions. There's some multiple choice, uh, but some short answer as well. Um, you also need an ID for this as well. Uh, government ID, hopefully, but um, some I've, I've learned that some of you don't have government IDs, so hopefully um, we will try to make use with a pictured student ID. If you don't have a pictured student ID or a government ID, you need to get that by Wednesday. 
Otherwise, how I can't we can't determine that it's actually you taking the test, right? So let's see. I don't know if you said it, but will we meet for class on Wednesday? No, you will just do the test on Wednesday. You will not be meeting at 10 a.m. So for the exam, we're allowed scratch scratch paper, the periodic table, calculator, and the equation sheet. So the equation sheet has the periodic table on it, right? Um, so you'll want to get that and scratch paper, yes, and your calculator. Do we have to download the app before the test or will it be a link on Wednesday? Yes, good question. Um, so you need to get the ProctorU web app before Wednesday. Um, if you tried to take the test without it, you can't. Um, and the way you get to the test is that you go to course content. So the test will be under course content. You're not going to go to the Proctor U website to try and take the test. Um, so you'll go under course content and it'll be under test one, but you need to have the Proctor U web extension logged into your account. And that means you have to be on Chrome or Firefox. Uh, can we print the equation sheets? You will have to, because when you do the test, you cannot have any other program open. Um, it will know if, that, if another program is open. Um, those of you who have accommodations for like other programs to be open, don't worry, your accommodations trump whatever Proctor uses. So um, yeah, if you got um, an okay from like the DSS office to have like Word open so you can copy and paste stuff, um, of course that will fly. But if you don't have those accommodations, you can't have any program open. Um, you'll be flagged for that. Any other questions about um, the test? And I will say the best way to study for the test is make sure you know how to do every single problem we went over in class. Because when I made the test, what I did is I looked at the problems we did in, did in class and uh, I just changed variables. And that's basically all I did. So if you know how to do every single problem we did in lecture, which we have been doing for a month now, you should have no problem acing this. If you don't, um, you probably won't do well. So make sure you know how to do every single problem. Um, that's what the point of those problems in lecture are for. I'm showing you what I'm going to ask you on the exam, 100%. That's what those questions are. So just everything we learn. Um, yeah, every, every single question I ask during the lecture, you know how to do every single one. If you know why, why we did certain steps the way we did them, all right, you should be gold. After exam, can we delete the extension? Um, yeah, you can definitely delete the extension after the exam. Um, you just have to uh, reinstall it uh, when you take the next exam, that's it. But you don't, yeah, if, if you're not comfortable with the idea of it allowing, having access to your webcam um, when you're not taking the exam, feel free to, to delete it, yeah. Uh, what compounds do, do, will we have to memorize? So. Um, that table of polyatomic ions should be the only one that you have to know. Um, yeah, I don't think we had any other like compounds I had you memorize. Will the test cover molarity? No. So any so um, the cutoff point for the lecture material was let me pull up the calendar. Was PowerPoint that was dated nine sixteen. The PowerPoints dated 918 and 921. No information on 918 or 921 will appear on the test. Only 916 was our cutoff. Will there be combustion analysis and empirical formula questions on the test? Or can you not tell us what kind? I can tell you what's on the test. We did not do combustion analysis in class, so I'm not gonna ask you that on the test. Um, empirical formula, we did do that in class. So it's a possibility it'll be on the test. That's what I'll say. Any question we did in class, there's a possibility that I will re-ask it on the test. 
That does not mean we'll have every question on the test, otherwise you will never finish it. But I can guarantee if we did not do a question in class, like if there's a question on the reading guide that I didn't do in class, you don't have to do that. It won't be on the test. So don't worry about those. Let me see if I missed anything else. Do, do, do. What about stoichiometry? I don't remember if that was in lecture. So stoichiometry was in lecture, but I believe that was on Friday. Um, so balancing equations, we have to know, but using that to determine like if I have X moles of A, how many moles of B do I get? That was on Friday, so that'll be on test two, but we did cover balancing. Um, any questions from the homework that'll be on the exam, Mastering Chemistry? Um, if there are, it's purely a coincidence in that um, I, didn't, I didn't pull from Mastering Chemistry to make this exam. That being said, when I make the Mastering Chemistry exam or, or homework, they are mainly the same problems we do in class. I tried to match that up. So, um, the mastering chemistry assignments could be good practice if you want more practice problems, but I did not go into mastering chemistry to look at those questions to redo the variables. Will we be able to use scratch paper? Yes. Kind of weird question, but if we tape the formula sheet and periodic table above the webcam on our laptop, will we get flagged for eye movement for looking up? Probably. Um, you might do that. So. Um, so it's, it's probably not a good idea to have it like, because what's going to happen is that I believe before you start the exam, you have to do a 360 rotation of your room and you have to do a desk to see like what's in there, right? So if you do that rotation and like there's paper like hung up that, you, that the camera can't really see, that's going to be flagged. And if I can't make out what's on that paper, um, yeah, I, if I can't verify what's on it, um, that's not great. So um, I would just try to avoid doing that and just because the equation sheet and periodic table is just one sheet, right? And there's only a couple problems you really have to use those for. So hopefully you can have that under your scratch paper. There will be no quiz or homework, right? Just a test on Wednesday. Should we study the problems in the class test one? Uh, yes, the problems in the folder called class test one are the only thing I'm asking you on. So make sure you know how to do all of those. On Wednesday, are we gonna have class? No, no, we are not. Any other questions? I hope I don't get dinged for my kids drawing papers all over the wall. Um, probably shouldn't matter if they're like drawings of like horses. If they're drawing of chemical formulas, that might matter. So hopefully they're not doing that. Um, anything else before we move on? My office is cluttered with stuff. Is that going to be an issue? It might. You need a clean office space. So if you have like papers everywhere, um, you're going to want to try and um, uh, tidy that up. If it's just like books and stuff, that should be fine. Or like trinkets, that should be okay. But you're like your desk right in front of you has to be like cleared of like stuff. If there's just random papers everywhere, that might be a problem. If we look, is it okay if we look down to work on problems and doing calculations? Yeah, that's totally fine. Um, what I was just saying is that when you, when, so I had this for biochemistry. And there were some people who were this close to the camera. And so when they went to look down, they were like this. And what happens is that uh, the AI will flag you because like they can't see your face. And then a real person will come in, watch that video. And then 100% of the time, they will then give it to me and say, yeah, this person wasn't looking down. We're thinking they're cheating. Um, 
for biochemistry, I did not think anyone was cheating because I can see their screen at the same time. So I know what they're working on. And then like, yeah, of course they're looking down on their scratch paper. Um, but, but just keep in mind, um, try to have your face in frame. It's not that big of a deal. What would be a big deal is if you did something like this, that would be a huge problem if you just completely left the camera. But if I can still see you're doing like this, that should be okay. I will have to review it. That reminds me, uh, during the test, this is kind of creepy, but it's a way to make sure that uh, you're not cheating. Anytime you're doing the test, I have the privilege to look in through your camera and see what you're doing and look at your screen. And you will not know I'm there. It will not tell you Dr. Andrews is not watching you. So keep in mind, that is a thing that could happen where if you're taking tests, I could just peek in and see how's it, how's it going. Um, okay, do we have all day to do the exam? Yeah, you, the exam, what's gonna happen for the exam is that the exam will open at 12.01 a.m. on Wednesday and close at 11.59 p.m. on Wednesday. You can start at any time but as soon as you start it, you have an hour to finish it. Do not start the exam past like at least 11.30 p.m. Getting into the system takes five minutes for Proctor U, at least five minutes. If you have any technical difficulties, you need to give yourself time to work those out. You need to give yourself time to contact me or Proctor U. If you try to start super late, and this happened to one student in my biochemistry exam who's tried to start their exam at 11.58 p.m., they didn't have time, they couldn't get in, and I give you an hour and you don't start, or I give you the whole day, so I'm not, if you come back to me and said, I tried to start my exam at 11.55 p.m., I couldn't get in on time, can you reopen it? The answer is gonna be no, because you have all day, so do not wait to the last minute, you might, not be able to do the exam. Um, like we won't get red flagged. Uh, I think I just answered it. Are you going to be looking at what proctor you dings? Yes. So they send me an email. Um, they they can't change anything. All they can do is say, um, they'll send me an email, say we have an incident. They'll tell me what time point that they'll send me a screenshot of the time point. Um, and then if there's any other instance, they'll tell me those time points. And I have access to the video all the time, the whole video of when you're taking the test. So I can go back and watch it. Um, so Proctor U has no control over like what, if you get dinged or not. They'll just tell me if they think something's happening, then it'll go to me. That being said, don't, don't have like random equations on your walls. That doesn't look good, right? Um, Anything else? Um, I will say, uh, so nobody asked this, but I think this is also a good question. Um, during the exam, you can't have your email open. So it, it, I'm gonna go over the uh, exam today, just, just to make sure it all, I wrote it on Sunday, so I'm gonna make sure it all makes sense. If you have like issues about the exam, um, you have to contact Proctor U and they'll contact me, right? Um, so that's, that's how you're gonna to have to contact me if you have any questions. Um, there's something else I was gonna say, but I just lost it. Make sure that you have good bandwidth. Um, because um, sending a webcam over the internet takes quite a bit of bandwidth. So if you know you're in a place that has very spotty Wi-Fi under normal conditions, like just watching this, it's gonna be even more taxed if you are sending a webcam. And I actually had one student who kept disconnecting during their tests because their internet connection was kind of crap. So if you share your internet with other people, um, see if you can block off a time where no one else is using the internet or you can move to a different spot in the house or um, you can see if the library can rent you out a private room and use the internet there. 
As a student living in the dorm, I'm not sure if I will have anywhere to go privately. I have a roommate and there are also students in the building where I can get homework done. Is that gonna be a problem? It's gonna be a problem if someone walks into your camera, yes. So um, what I would do is, like I said, see the university library. Um, I think they're renting single rooms. I'm not 100% sure, but I would contact them ASAP to see if you can lock down a single room for a time frame. If not, you're gonna to have to talk to your roommate and say, I need an hour to do a test. Um, and could you go take a walk? Or um, I just need an hour where you're not in the room because other people in the room, you will be dinged. Uh, do, 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 do. I thought Proctor, you locked down your browser anyways. Um, so I, I've never taken a test through Proctor, you. I know in their little training video, like what they have is like, oh no, a pop, like a new tab was open. Um, so I don't know if they lock it down. Um, they might, but um, just be aware I can see your screen at all times. If you are really computer savvy and you're thinking about uh, doing this through a virtual machine and then having your host machine have like answers on it, um, that doesn't work. Proctor, you can tell if you have a virtual machine, so. Just going to save you the trouble of going through that right now. Uh, it's crazy that Bioscan. Uh, so we do not do glycolysis in Biochem One. That is Biochem Two. I live in a small town with poor internet connection. So um, again, I would see if you can make accommodations on campus somehow if you have poor internet. Um, those. Are, so there are safety protocols in place right now for um, campus if you haven't been on since the start of the pandemic where you have to get your temperature checked, you have to wear a face mask, um, they wipe down everything. I think for biochem, I did have two students who took it in, um, in on campus. So it is uh, possible to do that. I'm only able to take my test in the dining room. Um, again, make sure that nobody is going to bother you during that hour. If, if, if you have to take them dine, I had people take it in their living room for biochem and it was fine, but just don't have people like walking behind you or anything like that. Um, one, you shouldn't have that anyways during a test because you need to focus, but yeah, just, just see if you can say, carve out an hour where you can't be disturbed. Does it record our audio? Yes. Um, that's another thing people got dinged for, which I don't really care about, um, where people are reading out their exams. If, you're comp if you want to read out your exams, that's fine. Um, they will flag you for it, but I don't care. Yeah, so if you have spotty internet, um, again, University is the one thing that pops into my mind. Um, <laughs> um, unfortunately, since this, you know, pandemic days, we have to do everything online. Um, and we need, I, and I need to see what you're doing during the exam um, to keep academic integrity up um, during these. So this, I'm trying, we're trying to make, the most ideal solution out of a non-ideal um, circumstance. Obviously, I would wish everybody was in class so I could walk around, right, and see what you're doing right there. Obviously, can't do that. So, um, go what? So, what you do if if you're worried about crap internet? Go to the web link I put on the announcements. Like as soon as class is done, they'll do download and upload speeds they will tell you if your internet's too crap, right? Um, so that should give you some peace of mind. How do you download ProctorU? Uh, so the um, link I provided on the announcements um, will, will or just read my announcement. It'll tell you how to do that. It'll tell you how to get the extension for Chrome and Firefox. And there's a link there as well. Uh, can we test in the library? I think you can test in the library as long as you get one of those private rooms. Um, again, I have not been in a library since, well, a long time, but uh, at least February. Um, so I, I don't know if they're like 
loaning private rooms out? I think they might be, um, but you're, yeah, you're gonna want to try and get one of those if you can, um, right? Because you need to be in a quiet private environment. Are we staying online throughout the rest of the semester? Uh, we are probably not going back the rest of the semester unless they get a vaccine going, which regardless of what the president says is not gonna be ready anytime soon. Uh, vaccines don't work like that. Uh, anyone who's got accommodations will have their accommodations. Don't worry about that. Anything else? Speak now or we'll go on to uh, lecture. Yes. If you got accommodation through DSS, I already got your letter and I know how to make that happen. So do not have to worry about that. All right. So that is not coffee, that is water. If this was all coffee, I would be peeing every 10 minutes. I only drink two cups a day, which is down from my like five cups when I was a PhD student. Okay, let's open up the PowerPoint again. What is the molecular form for coffee? Um, caffeine is all that matters. And I don't know what the molecular form of caffeine is. There's a lot of like, there's hundreds of molecules in coffee that make coffee coffee. So it's just not like a molecule of coffee, right? It's a, it's a big old blend. The only thing I care about though is the caffeine. And I don't know what caffeine is off the top of my head. On the beginning of the test, can we write down equations and stuff for our, on our scratch sheet? Um, so once the test begins, so what I believe that happens is that you have to show them like, this is my paper, right? There's nothing on it. This is my equation sheet. I didn't write anything else on it. Um, once the test starts, go wild, right? You can write down anything you want on your uh, equation or your scratch paper or equation sheet. So if you just want to like load up in your short term memory, everything you want, and then for lack of a better word, throw it up on your paper, right into the test, that's fine. I used to do that all the time. That shouldn't be a problem. All right, so we talked about uh, stoichiometry. And again, this won't be on the test on Friday, or Wednesday, but we talked about this on Friday, how stoichiometry can tell us when we have one molecule, we can uh, make other ones. What we're going to talk about today is the idea of limiting reactant and theoretical yield. Now, limiting reactant, historically in Gen Chem, gives you all a fit, where what I mean by that is I talk about it and then it seems like nobody understands it. So let me give you the easiest example of limiting reactant. My favorite food in the world is pizza. And let's say that I have a recipe for pizza. My recipe for pizza is one pizza crust, and I'm gonna call that PC, one pizza crust plus two cups cheese plus one can tomato sauce equals one pizza. Right, I'm making a cheese pizza. And let's say I have five pizza crusts. I have eight uh, cups of cheese. I'm gonna call that CC, eight cups of cheese. And I have nine uh, cans of tomato sauce. So I have five pizza crusts, eight cups of cheese, nine tomato sauces. How many pizzas can I make? Five, I can make five pizzas. 
four. I can make four pizzas, right? Because my cheese runs out. I can make four pizzas. That is called a theoretical yield. Theoretically, using all the ingredients I have, I can make a total of four pizzas. What's my limiting reactant? What runs out first? Why can't I make five pizzas or six pizzas? Cheese. I am limited, or yeah, I'm limited by the amount of cheese I have. That's my limiting reactant. That's all it is. In a chemical equation, and that's, that's what this is. This is a chemical equation. Whatever reactant, and I guess I should draw arrows, but whatever reactant runs out first is your limiting reactant. The maximum amount of stuff you can make with your limiting reactant is called your theoretical yield. So hopefully, looking at that pizza example, everybody here can wrap can make sense of that. It's not that hard of a concept. But for some reason, if I asked one mole of NAC, uh, sure, one mole of Na plus two moles of Cl plus one mole of oxygen or O, and I said I have five moles of Na, eight moles of Cl, and one mole of oxygen, and that makes, I don't know, NaClO, fake compound how many moles of NaClO can I make? I think just looking at these chemical symbols, students have a tendency to overthink where, oh no, now it's chemistry, so it has to be super complicated, but it's not. So whenever you think things are getting complicated, replace those chemicals with pizza or whatever your food favorite food is and the idea in math is a hundred percent the same thing so try not to be intimidated when we go to molecules for this which we're going to now so find the limiting reactant in theoretical yield for two sodiums plus br2 making two sodium bromide and I'll do A, just so we make sure we're, we know what we're doing, right? So A, my starting concentration is 2.5 moles of sodium and one mole of Br2, right? So I start with my sodium and I'm simply asking, if I have 2.5 moles of Na, how much NaBr can I make? Well, let's look at our stoichiometry. For every two moles of Na I have, I make two moles of NaBr, right? So 2.5 moles of Na will make 2.5 moles of NaBr. So that's my first reactant. Let's look at Br2. I have one mole of Br2. For every one mole of Br2, I make two moles of NaBr. So with my Br2, the amount of NaBr I can make is two moles of NaBr. So my limiting reactant is Br2 because that makes less of my product. My the theoretical yield for this whole reaction is two moles. If I started with 2.5 moles of Na and one mole of Br2, I could only make two moles of sodium bromide. I run out of bromide or uh, bromine before I run out of sodium. Br2 is my limiting reactant. All right, so let's try B now. And B is actually a uh, good practice for the test because remember to go from one molecule to another, you need to be in moles. Well, I, I start you off with grams. So you have to go from grams to moles, which will be on the test on Wednesday. So make sure we can do that. Otherwise, try to solve B as always. 
please use this time to efficiently um, to work on your problems. Because as a reminder, these are really just um, practice for the exam. If bromine runs out, runs out before sodium, would it just work by looking at the equation since it says one mole of Br and 2.5 moles of sodium? No, because if I said 1.5 mole of Br, Br2, that makes three moles of sodium bromide. So Br2 would not be limiting then, it would be sodium. So you can't just look at the smaller number if that's what you're asking. You have to actually see how much you make. So hopefully we're, we're okay going from grams to moles. Um, if not, <laughs> hopefully we'll be okay by Wednesday. So remember to get to go from grams to moles, I need molecular weight, right? And so if I have 289.7 grams of sodium, and the molecular weight of sodium is 22.99 grams per one mole, then, let me get my sheets. I actually didn't write down how many moles of sodium that is, so let me continue. Um, so that, so I'll give you moles of sodium. I just went straight to how many moles of uh, NABR I can make. So right now I'm in moles of sodium. For every two moles of sodium, I make two moles of NABR. So with 289.7 grams of sodium, you can make 12.60 moles of NABR. All right, let's look at BR2. So I have 500.3 grams of Br2. Where do you get the two moles of sodium? Um, that's from the equation, stoichiometry. For every two moles of sodium, I make two moles of sodium bromide. Um, so that's where my two to two ratio is coming from. That's why it's two moles of sodium to two moles of sodium bromide. All right, so uh, 551.3 grams of Br2. So you go to your periodic table and you see that Br has a weight of, uh, where is it, 79.9. But I want Br2. So remember, if you have Br2, you want to multiply this by two. So the weight of Br2 is 159.808 grams of Br2 for every one mole of Br2. Then we go back to our equation, right? For every one mole of Br2, 
I make two moles of sodium bromide, right? Moles of Br2 cancel out. Grams of Br2 cancel out. My unit is moles of sodium bromide. Everything on the top multiply together, divided by everything on the bottom. This makes 6.900 moles of NaBr2, uh, or just NaBr, sorry, not NaBr2. So now we have to ask, what's limiting? Well, sodium, we made 12.60 moles of NaBr. Bromine, we made 6.90. So even though we start with a bigger weight of Br2, we make less of our product when we do our stoichiometry. So Br2 is limiting. And our theoretical yield for this reaction is 6.900 moles of sodium bromide. questions about that idea. I'll give everybody like a minute or so if you're writing stuff down. All right, let me clear my scribblings. All right. So um, just looking at the time, um, we won't be able to look at the PowerPoint I had for today. So what that'll, and what that'll mean basically is the PowerPoint I had for today, I'm going to push out the Friday and I'm just going to push like all my lectures back one day. Um, and I'll, I'll make an announcement for this, but basically that means you don't have a reading guide for Friday do because you already did it on Monday. You don't have a quiz for Friday do. But again, uh, we don't need to worry about that right now. Um, I'll just make that announcement. Anyways, let's talk about actual yield and percent yield now. So when you do an experiment, you actually never get your theoretical yield 100%. Um, you can have side reactions. You can have reactions that just don't go to completion. But in reality, reactions almost never go to 100% complete. Um, to go back to the example of like pizza, it would be like if you're making pizza and you drop like um, uh, one thing of cheese on the floor and then before you can pick it up, your dog comes over and eats it. Not that that ever happened to me or anything, but if that does happen, you can't make your theoretical yield. And so the actual yield is what you get from the reaction. When you measure your products, how much did I actually get? And then we can calculate a percent yield. A percent yield is simply what you actually got divided by what you should have got. So that's how I actually remember it. What you actually got divided by what you should have got. or actual divided by calculated, or what they have there, actual divided by theoretical, right? So different ways to measure uh, percent yield. All right, so our last question for today, this is where I'll cut it off. Again, I'll just push everything back one day. If you already did the reading guide and quiz for Friday, you're, you're set um, because those will be due on Monday now, but I'll, I'll make that change later today. But let's calculate percent yield for our equation we were just looking at. So um, these are relatively simple calculations, right? So I'll do A and allow you to do uh, B and C. So A, theoretically, I should have got 28.4. However, actually, I only got 18.3. So what you do is you take your uh, actual divided by your theoretical, and you should get um, 0.644 to 
to make this a percentage, you multiply it by 100%. And so you got 64.4% of what you should have got. So your percent yield is 64.4. All right, uh, B and C is actually good practice for Wednesday as well, because we have to do conversion between grams, moles, and atoms again. So I'll put up Avogadro's number. Okay, yeah. so um, yeah, see if you can do B and C. Give me a uh, percent yield. So there's a question. So uh, let me try to rephrase this. Um, on the previous question, the equation we were given is theoretical yield. Yes. Um, so what we calculated on the last question was only theoretical yield. And the amount that's actually done is the actual yield. Yes. So when you, you would measure that or you'd be given it like, like you would theoretically calculate how much you should get. Then when you do an experiment, you have to measure how much you actually got. That's your actual. And then you just divide both. So in this problem, yes, I'm giving you both. I'm giving you the theoretical and asking you um, and giving you the actual and asking you to, to do a percent yield. Um, what might happen on the test though, is I might ask you to calculate the theoretical, but I always had to give you an actual. There's no way you can calculate an actual yield unless you do an experiment or unless I give you the percent yield and ask you to work backwards, say you got 70% and I give you the tools to calculate theoretical yield, then you could calculate actual. But in most cases, I'm just going to give you an actual and ask you to calculate theoretical. And from there, you can do percent yield. All right, so let's let's do B here, right? So a reaction has a theoretical yield of 32.0 grams of sodium bromide, but you got 0.298 moles. So when doing percent yield, your units have to be the same. Either you have to be both in grams or both in moles. You cannot divide a gram by a mole and do percent yield. So regardless, whatever way I do this, right? I need um, my, my molecular weight. So sodium, if we look at the periodic table, sodium is 22.990. Bromine is 79.904. And it's one to one. So you just add those two together and that should be uh, 102. 102. Point, I got 894. If you are not sure what I did just there, you will want to re look at your notes because I have a question like that on the test where I just simply ask you to calculate molecular weight of something for me. And so what I did is I converted the 0.298 moles in the grams. If you want to convert the 32 grams in the moles, that's completely fine too. I just didn't do that. So 0.298 um, moles of sodium bromide. Uh, one mole of sodium bromide. 
is 102.894 grams. And so that is uh, 30.7 grams. Now we can do our percent yield. It's actual divided by theoretical. So I actually got 30.7. My theoretical was 32 multiplied by 100%. And that is 95.8%. Uh, 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 for C, same idea, except this time we're given uh, atoms. So what I did was I used Avogadro's number to convert atoms into moles, as my dogs go crazy because the mailman's here. So I have 5.23 times 10 to the 23 atoms. Avogadro's number says that for every 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms, I have one mole of stuff. And this stuff is sodium bromide, it's not stuff. Again, make sure you know how to do that calculation for Wednesday. Um, from there you get 0.868 mole. So theoretically, I should have got 0.868, I actually got one, so that's an easy calculation. That's 86.8%. Is it ever 100% actual yield? In reality, um, no. What you would find in chemistry though, is that, and those of you who've taken Gen Chem 1 lab, I'm not sure if we're doing the experiment uh, this year because of COVID, but there is an experiment where we ask you to do um, percent yield. And most students get like 120, 140, 150 percent. What that means is that your product is impure. Like you have water in it. Um, you have side reactions in it. So actually, it's like you almost never get 100 um, percent. You can get over 100%, but that's not real. That means you have impurities. Any other questions? All right, so if you do have questions about the exam, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or to Michael. I know he has a uh, session on Tuesday, and I believe he also has sessions on Wednesday. Um, so he would be a fine resource to just bombard him with questions. He's taken my tests. He knows what to expect. Um, I made the test. I know what to expect. Um, uh, what is the 102.894? Yeah, so the 102.894 is the molecular weight of sodium bromide. Thank you very much for answering that for me. Um, yeah, so um, just, just one last thought. Um, if you do not know something, I cannot, I do not know that unless you tell me, right? So um, the only way that you can get help is to ask for help. So please do not hesitate to ask. If you, if you knew everything already and you didn't have any questions, my question to you is why are you in college right now, right? You're here. Oh, well, the idea here is you're here to learn. To learn means you don't know something. So I'm, I'm here to help you know that. So um, if you're ever feeling bad about asking a question, um, don't because unless you're a master, you should have questions. I mean, I have questions about chemistry all the time. Um, does he know what's going to be on the exam? I didn't know, he does not. He knows how I make my exams. Um, he has not seen the exam though, and I am not gonna show him the exam, um, but he's taken Gen Chem 1 and Gen Chem 2 with me, right? So he knows how to prepare for exams because he did well in my class. Um, so uh, if you wanna ask him for tips, how he did it, um, you should let him know. Uh, will tomorrow be extra credit as well? So yeah, if you visit, if you visited with him any time in this semester, right, 
um, you will get um, extra credit on test one. If you visited with him twice, you'll get a little bit more extra credit. Don't ask me how much, because I don't know yet, because I haven't decided. If you visit him with three times, that's great. I applaud that, and I think it's good for you overall, but you won't get more extra credit for that. Are we gonna have bonus? No, there are no extra credit questions on the exam. There's enough regular questions that I don't need to ask extra credit questions. And in general, uh, I hate the idea of extra credit. I think you should get what you get. So when I offer extra credit, it's gonna be a rare opportunity. So please do try and take advantage of it when you can. Um, it is 10.56, by the way, so if you have to leave, um, that's totally fine. Um, and you can watch the recording of anything. Um, but I do have a couple more minutes and I have to go to a meeting here at 11. Um, but if you have any last minute questions that you want to uh, ask, um, feel free um, I, to ask them right now uh, before I have to go. Anything at all. As I drink my giant thing of water. I don't know what an Inspire calculator is. Um, if it's if it's like a scientific calculator or a graphing calculator, that should be fine. But yeah, I've never heard of an Inspire before. Usually we use Texas instruments because we're in Texas. And I hear everything's better in Texas. Oh, so Texas instrument is, so it is a TI Inspire. I just looked it up. Yeah, that seems fine. You don't have to do anything fancy in my class, so, but that's good enough. If we get flagged, we'll log us out. No, if you get flagged, um, it, it will send me an email once you're done with the exam and somebody's reviewed it. And they'll say, we have a high priority incident that might be academic cheating. You need to look at it. Then I look at it and like every single, these are the two things I got from biochemistry. One, people were talking during it, which I guess I don't care if you talk it out. Um, I mean, what could be happening, I guess, is that somebody has like a little tiny ear pod in and they're getting fed answers. And if you're that level of James Bond cheating, I mean, I guess you have me beat. If you have someone hired on your payroll that can answer questions on the fly like that for you. But the other way people got dinged was doing this. So just try to have your face in the camera. All right, well, I got to run to, well, I'm not running anywhere. I got to log into another meeting. So this will go up in, like in the afternoon. Um, otherwise, have a good one, everyone.